I'm Samantha Wallington and I'm the team leader of Lansdowne High School 2. Our project was to create a portable automated external defibrillator, an AED, with the main goal to make it less than £100 as close to their value as possible. Other briefs of the project included that it had to be fully automated, safe and had to be easy to use to any bystander could operate it if necessary. The AED also had to be portable and have a safe housing to protect against various weather conditions. Most importantly, it had to be effective and reliable at monitoring a patient's condition. The reasons behind the project was the current AEDs in the market are roughly £1,000. This is not economically viable and is unaffordable to the general public, such as schools or shops, who may need them in circumstances. It also discriminates against developing countries. Many rural villages may therefore suffer higher rates of sudden cardiac arrest situations, which could have been avoided. An AED that was economically viable could save many lives and can improve the quality of life of many others. The roles of the team were that I, Samantha, was the team leader and general organiser. Matthew wrote the report and collated all of our findings. Rain was involved in the general use of the AED in its automation, and Scott investigated into the necessary insulation of the components to ensure their safe use and that they could last in various conditions. Salmon looked into the electrical components of the shocking circuit and the pricing of them, and Caleb did an analysis to see how we could make it cheaper with professional influence. Sam designed the casing of the AED and Ben did the coding of the AED so the monitoring circuit was operational and could theoretically work with a shocking circuit. Hi, I'm Scott Owen and I've been in charge of the insulation and batteries throughout this task. So before we start talking about the insulation, it's important we have a good knowledge of the batteries we've been using. Now we've used lithium ion batteries. These batteries have been used all across the board by all the major defibrillators commercially. And this is for a number of reasons. They have a fantastic battery life of about five years, which is perfect for our device. And secondly, they are highly capable in extreme weather conditions. So we're not too worried about the hot end in Britain because we never experience summers as hot as 60 degrees. But the lower end does concern us because the British winter is getting colder and colder all the time due to climate change. This means that the minus five to minus 20 degrees Celsius bracket in which you can lose functionality means that we're going to need some pretty good insulation because otherwise it might fall victim to the harsh winters. So in order to get an idea of what would be the best insulator we could use, we conducted a small experiment. We essentially modelled a mercury thermometer as our power supply. We insulated it with a number of household items, common insulators, such as styrofoam, foam and bubble wrap. We then put them in the freezer. The freezer was set to exactly zero degrees with the room temperature of 19 degrees in my house remaining constant throughout. We would then monitor the thermometer to see how long it took for them to fall to zero degrees, actually modelling a real life situation in the cold conditions. The best insulator we found was the scouring sponge. This is mostly due to its tight air pockets. We wrapped 500 grams of the insulator around the thermometer for each material, and it took an hour and 40 minutes for it to drop to zero degrees, which was by far and away the best. It's a great insulator, and it's what we've chosen to insulate our device with. Hello, my name is Salman Abdullahi. My job was to research the costing of the different parts that goes into the charging circuit. As you can see, these were the individual costs of all these parts. We needed more than one for some of the parts. We got some of the costs from the article of Hardware X, which talks about how the parts are used in the circuit. We had to do this as it was impossible to make the circuit, as it was dangerous to deal with the high voltage and it needed expertise. Some of the parts needed was not mentioned in the article, so we had to research the cost on Mauser, which is a catalog for microelectronics. The total cost of all these parts is £317.45. Firstly, the capacitor stores a charge until it's needed to electrocute the person. The flyback converter, which goes into the charging circuit, is formed from a number of MOSFET transistors, which control the transformer. The shunt regulator and the ap operational amplifier a part of the waveform and the Hirschberg mixer waveform. The purpose of the optocoupler photocoupler is to connect the separate circuit together. The isolated DC slash DC converter and the general purpose relay were both for the switcher, which is, a, which is in the PSOC. The microcontroller is needed for the PSOC microcontroller and this controls each component. I'm speaking on behalf of Caleb Morris who was in charge of competitive market analysis and costings. All prices he took came from the St. John's Ambulance Service, with the lowest price for a defibrillator coming in at £984, 
with the highest almost £2,000. The average price for a defibrillator used by the service was £1,278. This represents an enormous saving on our part of almost £1,000. To house the components and protect them from the environment, a case will be needed for the defibrillator. This case has outer dimensions of 35 by 25 by 15 centimetres and inner dimensions of 30 by 20 by 10 centimetres. In addition, this case will need to be able to support up to 3 kilograms in weight. As a result, the case will need to be strong to support the weight of the defibrillator and be able to protect the components from damage. Water resistant as it will be outside and contains electronics thus at risk from water damage. Heat resistant as it will have to function in a range of temperatures. Non-toxic as it will be used in medical emergencies. Non-conductive as the defibrillator will use a high voltage which could be harmful. Made of and made of an affordable material so costs will be reduced. Therefore we have chosen polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE or Teflon, as it fulfills all of the necessary requirements listed. This case will also have to be ergonomic as it must be easy and simple to use for all members of society. Therefore, the handle we have chosen for the case is designed to be easy for, to grip. The rectangular shape of the casing will also assist with manipulation and storage. The case will have a drawer in which to house the defibrillator pads to protect them. This drawer will use the aforementioned handle. We have chosen this design to remove the need for an extra container, making the process of setting up the defibrillator simpler and quicker. I have priced the total cost of materials to be a total of £13.75. My name is Benjamin Davis and I was in charge of programming and building the AED. When it came to building the AED, we used an Arduino Uno circuit board. This is because it is easy to use and it can perform multiple functions. This main circuit board here is connected via a breadboard to this smaller circuit board here. And this one actually allows for the AED functions to be performed. This is connected to these pads which are placed on different locations on the user's body, which allows for the program to read their heart rate. Instructions are then displayed to the user on this LCD liquid crystal display and this LED here flashes in time with the heart rate. The computer will then plot a graph of the user's heart rate. This method allows for minimal uncertainty because it, it makes use of a computer to calculate it and it is also very cost effective, costing us only £15.45 which falls well within our £100 budget. I will now transfer over to my computer screen where I will first run through the code and then I will show you the AED working in action. The Arduino uses a C++ coding language and on the screen you can see uh, the code that was used to make uh, the AED work. So I'm now going to just go through uh, what the code does and how it works. So at the start when we have void setup down to pin mode 11 input, this is just defining uh, where the connections are so that the program knows where to send the code. And then after this when we have if digital read 10 equals 1, if digital read 11 equals 1, that's checking that the pins are actually connected properly so that um, the code can be sent to the right place because if they're not connected properly then obviously it won't work and then if they're not connected it will display an error message and, and it will wait until they are connected and then the program will carry on running. Serial my port down to int bpm equals zero. We're essentially just defining variables here which will be used to both plot the graph and then calculate the actual beats per minute, which is over here where we have void calculate bpm. That's going to start the calculating process. Basically takes whatever current millisecond it is at the moment and then int diff equals beat new minus beat old. That's pretty self explanatory. We're just defining the difference between. Uh, the last two beats and then float current BPM equals 60,000 over difference so there's 60 seconds uh, in a minute, 1000 milliseconds in a second so there's 60,000 milliseconds in a minute and then you just divide that to difference and then you have uh, what the current beats per minute reading is and where we have uh, oh, and beats beats index equals current BPM we're going to record this information into uh, like a table or, or an array which means that you can have a list of all the current BPMs at 
uh, the millisecond that it was that it was read. Uh, float total equals 0, 0.0, so we're starting the total at zero, obviously, and then for int i equals zero to i equals less than 500. So what this means is that it will take the first 500 readings of the beats per minute, and then total plus equals beats i basically means that it will take whatever beat is in uh, the table at that position, and then it will add it to a running total. So you'll have a total of 500 beats to create like a sum of all the beats per minute and then BPM equals total over 500 so we've got 500 readings we've got a total so over 500 and you have your average beats per minute and then beat old equals beat new this is um, this allows the program to start again so if we calculate a new beats per minute the old beats per minute is now the new beats per minute so that we can start again So I've placed the pads on my body and I've started the program and as you can see on the screen now the graph is currently reading my heart rate over time and that is how the Arduino works. My name is Matthew Hill and I wrote the report for our team. Our project was a success as we managed to design and build a functioning AED at a considerably lower cost to commercial alternatives. Moreover, our device requires no prior experience in first aid or computing to operate. Our design can be used in almost all climates across the globe, as shown by our investigations. The materials are easy to obtain, meaning that the, the, the defibrillator could be mass produced. All of these factors mean that our design could be implemented to save lives in areas where they are deprived of access to AEDs due to their high price. Our next steps are to create a fully functioning design and to conduct proper tests to reveal any faults, including gathering input from electrical engineers. In conclusion, we believe our project was a success as we managed to design an, a robust, durable device for a cost significantly under the commercial average.